Hey guys, it's Aaron Classic Gamer, and we just got back from the Midwest Gaming Classic. Picked up all sorts of goodies. I figured I'd go ahead and go through it all. We're sitting here on the Centipede Cocktail Arcade Cabinet. So let's go ahead and go through some of the stuff we got today. Or over this weekend, pardon me. Picked up a whole lot of pinball advertisement flyers. The first one is Deadpool. Really cool uh, pinball machine. Uh, Artwork by Zombie Yeti. You'll hear that name quite a bit probably during this video. Here's the other side of that. Let's go ahead and go through the rest of these uh, pinball flyers here. There's Guardians of the Galaxy. Super cool pinball machine. Again, by Stern. Tons and tons of features. Really cool artwork. There's what the Pro looks like. The Pro model. Pretty darn sweet. We got to play most of these games here at the Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee. It was really, really cool. Here's the Monsters, a new pinball machine just released not too terribly long ago by, again, Stern. Tons and tons of features, guys. Here's what the Pro Edition looks like. Don't know if this is anything I'll ever pick up, but uh, definitely a really cool pin, guys. It's got the it, the DMD kind of looks like it's black and white, so <laughs> that adds a lot of coolness factor to all that. Then we have the Pirates of the Caribbean, and this is a tiered uh, flyer. It's from Kingpin Games. We got to play that. You'll see a video of that. Super hard game, guys. Almost nearly impossible, it seems like, to get very far. And uh, here's the different, uh, on the other side, uh, the different levels. You've got standard, limited, and collectors. Standard is $8,500. Limited is $9,500. And collector's edition is $12,500. Unbelievable. Won't be getting one of those anytime soon, but really cool pin. And it was fun to play while we were there at the Midwest Gaming Classic. Another cool game uh, that we got to play by American Pinball was Oktoberfest Pinball Machine. It says pinball on tap. Really cool thing, guys. It's like a little German town. You've got uh, all sorts of, uh, I don't know, fun stuff going on. You've got cart races. You've got beer drinking, of course. You've got the steins. You get to pick different steins for different uh, things you want to do. Here's the other side, guys. Really, really cool pen, guys. Tons and tons of stuff to do. You know, we like to drink some beer here at Aaron Classic Gamer, so uh, yeah, really cool stuff, including five multi ball features. Very, very fun game. Next one here we have Dialed In. It's Pat Lawler's original concept game. It's the first machine to feature Bluetooth connectivity, a camera, and additional player capabilities throughout the smartphone. Again, this is by Kingpin Games, which is uh, a subsidiary there, uh, pardon me, that sells uh, Jersey Jack Pinball machines. As is Oktoberfest there. Pardon me, Oktoberfest is American pinball. So here's the front of Dialed In there. Pat Lawler, I guess, had envisioned this game way back in the day and was unable to make it due to the, the uh, I guess, the uh, pinball, how you would make a pinball back in that day. So uh, electronics has advanced quite a bit. And it allowed him to make the game of his dreams dialed in. This was also there. Got to play that. Did not get a video of it because it was in close proximity to other pens. And unable to record. Another game that was unreleased that we got to play over the weekend was Black Knight Pinball. Here's the Pro Edition. Really thinking about picking this up from Stern, guys. Really cool game. You know, uh, uh, Black Knight came, back, came out and I think in the very early 80s and then there was Black Knight 2000 it was a reimagining of the system uh, of the game really really cool guys uh, this features a knight spinning a captive ball and you're able to lock the ball even on the pro edition with a magnet really really cool guys but here's the flyer here's the other side featuring all the really cool stuff here this is the, again the pro edition the limited edition actually features the second play field there like you would uh, see on uh, the original two machines, Black Knight and Black Knight 2000. Super cool, guys. It's uh, Mighty Black Knight Rides Again. Battle him and his legions in a feature-rich mechanical action melee of sound and light. 
Custom Interactive Black Knight toy with spinning flail and power shield. Speech synced RGB LED. Helmet lights and eyes. The Black Knight speaks in the original voice of Steve Ritchie with characters played by Ed Robertson, Brendan Small, and others. Black Knight Rocks played a powerhouse music composed and performed by Scott Ian of Anthrax. Magna Save Magnet near right drain serves as a draining ball, saves a draining ball, pardon me, by using the RGB fire button in the front molding. More main attractions. Classic lighting. Wheel updated with 12 bright RGB LEDs providing beautiful and eye-catching playfield animation. All right, yeah, that fire starts rolling, roaring in the back, guys. Super, super cool. This was definitely my favorite pin that I was able to play this weekend. That was unreleased. Super, super awesome pin, guys. Then we've got the the Monster Bash. Pretty cool machine. I know this came out kind of similar timing of the Monsters. A little bit earlier, I guess. This is a limited edition. Again, uh, this is Chicago Gaming Company that comes out with this. It shows the Pro LED and limited edition models. On the other side of the flyer, you can see the custom topper, the R RCB LED GIs, and the hot color upgrade, the HD color upgrade, if you so desire. So, really, really cool pen. This had a lot, a lot of players, guys. There was probably about 10 of these machines at the Midwest Gaming Classic, and people were just playing, 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 nonstop. Very fun pen. Another cool pen we had uh, a chance to play is Alice Cooper's Nightmare Castle. Super cool machine. Again, wasn't able to record this due to the long line. There was like 15 people waiting in line to play this game. But very, very cool. It's only a one-sided flyer. It says, for the master of theatrical shock rock, Alice Cooper's Nightmare Castle. Features two ball, physical Frankenstein, castle lock with monster to battle. Working guillotine interactive toy, four scoop subway shots, four ramp shots, unique spiral, habit trail return, monster magneto, ball save, three fully controlled drop targets, sculpted castle mountains and graveyard throughout the game, and ten fully licensed Alice Cooper songs. It's a pretty cool machine, guys. It played really, really fast. Uh, the multi-ball was crazy and very difficult to manage, but uh, there it is, man. Alice Cooper's Nightmare Castle. And I picked up one last flyer here. It is The Wizard of Oz, the 75th anniversary, based on a 1939 motion picture classic, The Wizard of Oz, 75, 75th anniversary. Again, this is by Jersey Jack Penball. Really beautiful pen, guys. Really does a really nice homage to the original uh, movie. Too bad there was never a pen, but again, it wouldn't be able to be up to the standards of today. And they're often free shipping, guys, if you pick this pen up. Just FYI from Jersey Jack Penball. Pretty cool. Alright, that's the end of that, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other stuff here. We were able to go to uh, Multicade. An arcade, pardon me, a bar arcade, and we picked up these really cool coins that say 1983 Arcade Bar. On them, let's see if it'll focus here. Kind of take a look here. Now on the other side it just says no cash value. So I got to do that Saturday night. They offered like three, four dollar beers. This place was uh, just down the street from the Wisconsin Convention Center, so very convenient timing, guys. Very, very convenient. Next, we uh, picked up some Neo Geo games. On uh, Saturday morning, we picked up Ninja Masters. The label is a reprint. However, it is the original game and cartridge. I did open it up and take a look. Picked this up. Not too bad. It was about $135 after some haggling. Really, really cool machine, guys. Pardon me. Really cool arcade game there. Yeah, I've really enjoyed playing this. I got to play it at one time on uh, the arcade at a local arcade here, but uh, actually being able to own the cartridge is just awesome, guys. It's been on my short list. I uh, played this uh, again on the Neo Geo X. Luckily we had that uh, included with that awesome uh, 21 games there. Definitely wasn't really good emulation. This, however, is amazing. I did play it on the MVS. It works great. And then I utilized my Neo Geo MVS converter 
2 to play it on my AES. Super cool, and I'm glad that this is a part of my collection, and I don't see not playing this for years and years to come. It's sitting in my Neo Geo right now. Next, uh, we're avid collectors of the King of Fighters series, as you know. Uh, one that's been eluding me, I've been missing 94, two, uh, pardon me, 97 and 2002. I was lucky enough to pick this up for a mere $27. Original label it is number 2014, so kind of low run there. Uh, all original uh, parts and everything else. The whole cartridge is into, uh, you know, is uh, the original. Got to open it up. Another cool game. Again, threw this in the Neo Geo MVS along with the Ninja Masters. Really, really lucky to find found this game. And I picked this up on Sunday towards the end of the show. And the guy was just willing to haggle. So can't go wrong there, guys. The King of Fighters, 1997. So now we have 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, and 2003. So all we are missing right now is 94 and 2002, and that'll call, complete our collection for the Neo Geo MVS. Uh, another cool Neo Geo MVS stuff that we picked up were the marquees, the Translite marquees. Uh, these are all used marquees, but uh, definitely really cool, guys. Uh, a little yellowed, you know, probably some smoke damage, stuff like that. But uh, picked these up. Yeah, they were supposed to be two dollars a piece, and I picked up seven of them for ten bucks. So you cannot beat that. You're not going to find it on eBay any cheaper than that. And then, and these are all games that I own. So this is uh, so now I have these, and I can swap them out in my Neo Geo. So I've been very excited about doing that. Here's Fatal Fury Two. And again, you know, these show uh, the different button combinations and some artwork from the machines. Alright, and then we have King of Fighters 94. Actually, this is the one game I don't own that I was able to pick up the marquee for. But that's not a hard game to find, so we'll be picking that up here shortly. And we have Three Count Bout, a wrestling game. It says, The Flames of Battle, Dance in the Ring. Super hard game, guys. If you can get past the first or second guy, you are one hell of a gamer. That's all I can say. And you have World Heroes 2. Definitely a beautiful game. A lot of people say it's a ripoff of uh, Street Fighter 2. And, you know, and to a degree it kind of is. You know, it's only three buttons instead of the six. And, of course, Neo Geo only has four buttons to begin with. Um, and it's a lot of uh, themed fighters from around the world and so on and so forth. But tons and tons of charm to this series, guys. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, then World Heroes 1. Again, I, I echo everything I said to uh, World Heroes 2. Really cool game. World Heroes 2 Jet is probably the one to own. And uh, out of all three of these different games, but uh, you guys should check this out. Then we have the classic Samurai Showdown 2. I don't know. You can't say much more about this game that's already been said. Uh, the first one was groundbreaking, amazing. Two is probably one of the best of the series, uh, only outdone by probably Samurai Showdown Five Special. Super, super cool, guys. If you ever have a chance to pick this up on PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three, any of the compilations, pick it up on the Nintendo Switch, on the N Nintendo Online, whatever, guys. You need to play this game. Definitely an awesome fighting game. This changed everything. Uh, brought weapons to the combat. Uh, this series just an amazing, amazing series. Hopefully, soon we'll be picking up. We'll be getting uh, Samurai Showdown 7 here on the next gen consoles. Then we have Baseball Stars Professionals. So check that out, guys. Super, super cool baseball game. Definitely worth picking up, guys. There was a port to the NES. Really, really cool. All right, guys, let's move on to the next uh, couple things we picked up. We picked up a button from Eon Games. They were doing all sorts of uh, cool tournaments and things like that at the Midwest Gaming Classic. So that one of the uh, really cool tournaments they had was the Mario Kart Double Dash tournament going on. Tons of free prizes. They hit all these little, uh, it looks like GameCube boxes they hit them all throughout the midwest gaming classic and if you're able to find one which i was not lucky enough to do because there were tons of people searching uh then you would get an awesome prize so 
Just a cool thing from the Midwest Gaming Classic here. Next, we were lucky enough also to get a third game this weekend. Spent quite a bit on Ninja Masters. So we didn't have a whole heck of a lot uh, to go around after that, but a game on my Dreamcast I've really been wanting. I'm right around the 200 mark on Dreamcast games, so I wanted to pick up Grandia too. It is the definitive edition of Grandia. Obviously on the Dreamcast, like I said, here's the backside. It is completely complete. Uh, most of them at the show were going for, I don't know, around $50, $55. There were some sealed copies going for $150. This is the complete inbox edition. They wanted $45, so that was still a pretty good deal, guys. That I was able to pick this up for $35. It's got the manual in really good shape. And then you have the, the disc, and here's an advertisement for Stupid Invaders coming soon. Super thick manual. You don't see that very often in uh, games nowadays. And then it also, the disc 2 wasn't actually more game. It was a music selection disc. So really cool soundtrack that comes along with this, guys. Definitely worth playing. It says on the back here, undeniably the prettiest role-playing game ever to grace a console by DailyRadar.com. Grandia 2, born of different worlds woven together by fate, each shall rise to face their destiny. Ryudo has been hired to protect a young priestess who must participate in a ceremony to halt the encroaching rebirth of Valmar, the god of darkness. Embroiled between the forces of good and evil, Ryudo must follow his destiny and save the people he detests so much. Featuring beautiful real-time 3D graphics, and over 20 minutes of high resolution, resolution CG graphics. Innovative, highly customizable combat system, part real-time, part turn-based. Includes additional CD of Grania 2 music as selected by composer Noriyuki Iwada. Uh, full 3D world with hundreds upon hundreds of people to interact with. Uh, one player VMU compatible, standard controller VGA box. Grandia2.com, probably not still open. And then the official Dreamcast magazine said the level of detail paid to every single moment, circumstance, and environment is overwhelming. And again, that's Grandia 2, one of my favorite uh, RPGs of all time, guys. I was lucky to pick this up. Uh, it's been something I've been looking for for a long time. It's really hard to find this game, not only in good shape, but playable condition and not scratched and so on and so forth and with the CD disc a lot of people threw them in the CD player and never played them again so that's the end of the games that we picked up at the Midwest Gaming Classic now we end with the really cool factor at least to me uh, as you know I own the uh, pardon me the uh, two different pinballs by Stern you have Ghostbusters uh, pinball I've got the Pro Edition and the, I also have Iron Maiden the Pro Edition so I was able to get the pin blades here at uh, the Midwest Gaming Classic, and I was lucky enough to meet the gentleman. His uh, name is Zombie Yeti, that uh, does the artwork for those machines. He also did Deadpool most recently, last year. And there's his signature, guys. Really cool. He signed on the pyramid on both pin blades. So these goes on, go on the side of the play field of the, the pinball machine between the play field and the the glass. So really, really cool. Been needing to pick these up anyway and just being able to find these official Stern pin blades that just came out a couple months ago and they had them in stock by Marco's Pinball. And I was able to get both of these pin blades signed by Zombie Yeti and strike up a really cool conversation. Again, there is his signature. And uh, he was nice enough to give me some stickers of things that he's drawn lately. Check that out. Really cool. And then here's his logo. One of his logos, I guess. Really cool sticker as well. And then uh, I was able to get a shirt from the guy. And he actually signed this as well. It's kind of hard to see the signature. You have to kind of take a look right there. All right, right there at the bottom there is his signature. So I got to meet the man, the myth, the legend, Zombie Yeti. And he signed this shirt and these pen blades, guys. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, definitely a dream come true being able to meet this guy. Really cool uh, logo right here. 
Big fan of his art. Really like uh, the Deadpool pinball machine, Iron Maiden, and of course Ghostbusters, my favorite pinball machine of all time. So just meeting the guy, very down to earth, super awesome guy, very knowledgeable about pinball machines, arcade machines, all that kind of stuff. So that's it guys, that was the Midwest Gaming Classic, uh, the stuff that we picked up anyway. Uh, I was there for two days, got there late Friday, stayed the night and went to the convention on Saturday and Sunday in Milwaukee at the, uh, I believe it was the Wisconsin Convention Center. Uh, thousands and thousands of games guys, we saw you know everything from the, the Nintendo PlayStation that was never released, that there's only one of that we know of in the world that's ever existed uh, to several Nintendo World Championship cards saw a gold one that actually did sell at the convention which is very impressive it was very very expensive guys I think he had twenty four thousand dollars on that game uh, so and that was actually sold this week uh, I saw two silver uh, Nintendo World Championship cards and there was actually a stadium events there as well that was graded and for sale so a lot, a lot of cool stuff. Tons of little Samson. Seems like everybody had one of those. Um, outrageously expensive on every single one of them. Uh, Complete was going for somewhere in the neighborhood of like a thousand, eleven hundred dollars. Complete inbox. Loose carts were going for between five and eight hundred dollars. Thanks, Game Chasers, for making that game outrageously expensive and unable to be owned by anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part of what we do on YouTube, and it just uh, drives the prices higher and higher, guys. So just keep in mind, guys, play, pay reasonable prices for these games. Things are just getting out of hand, and it just kind of detracts from the hobby overall. Uh, saw some Chubby Cherub carts, and that's going for 80 90 bucks. Used to be able to pick that up for like $30 all day long. Um, let's see, Panic Restaurant's going for three, $400. Pretty crazy stuff, but got to see a lot of really rare stuff that you're not going to see basically anywhere else unless you go to one of these conventions. So everybody's very hospitable. There was a whole uh, giant room of 100,000 square feet or so uh, full of arcade machines and every different uh, video game console you could ever imagine, all set to free play to enjoy, and different displays and things like that. You'll see some of those on the channel there. Really, really cool. A whole other room just as big, 100-something thousand square feet of vendors. And uh, then you had uh, Stern and Chicago Gaming and Jersey Jack Pinball and American Pinball. All four of them had really big uh, displays, had their uh, pinball machines there on display for free play. Got to play Willy Wonka and uh, Black Knight uh, for the first time, unreleased. Uh, neither game has been released yet, so that was really, really cool. Uh, just tons of other pens and games and lots and lots of fun guys. There were panels, uh, all sorts of famous guys from pinball and arcade and video game history. Really cool week guys, so just wanted to make this quick video, kind of talk about uh, the things we picked up, uh, the gaming pickups and the pen blades and meeting Zombie Yeti and uh, picking the MVS games up and all the different pinball flyers. I think I'm going to frame those and put them in the pinball room. But a lot of cool stuff, guys. Definitely a lot of memories for Midwest Gaming Classic 2009. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, peace and happy gaming.